evening everyone so today we are going to present on the topic risks of e-commerce this presentation is made by myself Shudipa Shaha along with my teammates Sneha Jana, Shomika Roy and Sriya Chakraborty here is our team member along with their names Okay, so the first slide I am going to talk about is defining e-commerce. E-commerce is basically electronic commerce where we buy or sell products through online over the internet. E-commerce uses uh, online applications, uh, mobile e-commerce, fraud transfer, supply chain management, internet marketing, internet banking, online transactions. E-commerce also uses web for a part of its transaction and along with it it uses email social various social media sites such as facebook whatsapp uh, e-commerce typically transaction includes the purchase of the products or the services to various vendors some of the most common examples of e-commerce in our day-to-day -day lives are amazon flipkart upwork olx here are the four models of e-commerce. The first one is business to business, next is business to consumer, third is consumer to consumer and fourth is consumer to business. So what is business to business? Here the companies do business among themselves, here the final consumer that is we are not involved in this process. Next is business to consumer. That is the company will sell the goods or the services directly to, to us. Some popular examples are Amazon and Flipkart. Next is consumer to consumer. Consumer is consumer where the consumers are in direct contact with each other. Example OLX and next is consumer to business. So consumer to business provides us some good services to the company. For example, a freelancer does. Yes, yes, you're audible. Please carry on. Okay. Uh, good evening sir, I am going to discuss about the security protocols of e-commerce. First is a secure socket layer. It is the most uh, commonly used protocol and it is widely used across the industry. It, uh, it should have the following security in, uh, in requirements like uh, the authentication, encryption, integrity and the non-reputability. The, the first is uh, secure hypertext transfer. Mm. The second is uh, secure hypertext transfer protocol. So this secure protocol, it extends the HTTP internet protocol with public key encryption, authentication and digital signature over the internet. This um, internet protocol supports multiple security mechanism. It provides security to the end users. It works by negotiating encryption scheme types used between the client and the server. Uh, next slide. And this slide, I'm going to discuss rest of the secure security protocols used in e-commerce. Um, here it is uh, given the secure electronic transaction. It is a secure protocol which is developed by the MasterCard and Visa in collaboration. It is the best security protocol in the industry. It has the following components. First is the cardholder's digital wallet software. Its function it is, is allows the cardholder to make secure purchases online via point and click interface. Second is merchant software. This component uh, helps merchants to communicate with potential customers and financial institutions in a secure way. Third is payment gateway server software. It provides automatic and standard payment process. It also supports the process for merchant certificate request. The last component is the certificate authority software. This software is used by financial institutions to issue digital certificates to cardholders and merchants. It also enables them to register their account agreements for uh, future secure electronic uh, commerce. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir, and good afternoon, everyone. I am Sneha Jana. I will be discussing about the measures to ensure security. Encryption is an effective way to secure data which is being transmitted over the network. The process converts the original representation of the information into an encoded format using a secret code and only the specified receiver having the decrypt code can decrypt the data using uh, the uh, decryption code. Another measure is uh, digital signature. It ensures the authenticity of the information. A digital signature is an e-signature authenticated through encryption and password. Next is security certificates. Security certificate is a unique digital ID used to verify the identity, identity of an individual website or user. Next slide. 
now let's discuss about the firewall a firewall consists of software and hardware setup between an internal computer network and the internet a computer network manager sets up the rules for the firewall to filter out unwanted traffic these rules are set up in such a way that unauthorized access is much more difficult to access the network and the data Next one is password system. A password is a string of characters used to authenticate a user to access a system. Passwords must be at least 8 characters long and contain a combination of upper or lower case letters, numbers, symbols so that it is become difficult for an unauthorized user to guess the password. It is also mandatory to block account access after 4 unsuccessful login attempts. Next is cryptography. It is a technique of securing information and communications through use of codes so that only those persons for whom the information is intended can understand it and process it. Thus, we can prevent unauthorized access to information. Now, from here, my teammates Shreya will continue. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good evening, sir. So, myself Shreya and um, our teammate Sneha has discussed about the different measures which we can take to ensure security in e-commerce businesses. Now let us talk about the advantages and disadvantages which we get in e-commerce. First advantage is paperwork is reduced. Obviously e-commerce is basically carrying out businesses in online media using the internet. So all the transactions are recorded digitally and they are stored in the like hard disks and disk drives of the computers so that is how paperwork is reduced then comes the second advantage which is minimum investment definitely e-commerce is basically doing business using uh, the internet okay so uh, organizations uh, need not invest in setting up physical stores and also need not set up labor force for those stores so that investment portion is cut down so what the organizations can do is they can set up a website and uh, look into the aesthetics aesthetic elements of those website then comes e-commerce helps to improve the company's brand image so definitely if the customers are uh, sitting in the comfort of their homes and they are able to uh, get the services and products which they desire so that is uh, helping the company to improve their brand image then next advantage is it is helpful to organizations to provide better services to their customers now this is because the investment portion of the organization is cut down significantly so what can the organizations do is they can invest in making the products and the services better the quality of the offerings to the customers if those are better then definitely the from the customers they will get better review and better uh, like uh, experience then comes e-commerce digitizes the information that helps to manage the paper based information so this is basically the transactions and everything uh, like every uh, information of the customers and every customer data is stored digitally then we come to the disadvantages one uh, most important aspect of e-commerce is the internet as because e-commerce is business carried out in the internet so internet connectivity is a must thing if one does not have any internet connectivity or have uh, or does not have any strong or secure connection then that is a disadvantage then comes security now as because uh, in e-commerce it ut utilizes a cyberspace the cyberspace is basically prone to attacks by the cyber criminals so security is a very big uh, aspect of e-commerce if proper security is not implemented then it can hamper a uh, customer's data which can result in identity theft credit card theft etc then uh, the next aspect is also of security that is e-commerce uses a public key which is not very much secure then uh, the next disadvantage that is lack of feel or touch of products while purchasing them online was actually a disadvantage uh, nearly 10 to 20 years ago when uh, the uh, online marketing and the business of e-commerce just started with the advent of technology people uh, would be like 
I am not able to see the product physically. I am not able to touch it. Then why will I buy it? But with the advent of technology, uh, now the mindset of people have changed. They are um, as because they are getting products by sitting in the comfort of their homes, um, and uh, everything is at their fingertips. This is not really a disadvantage nowadays, and people actually prefer um, ordering products and services from online. Then comes uh, again. Uh, uh this disadvantage is also uh, very uh, subjective that is um, it is inconvenient to use the internet for those people who are living in remote villages and it is still not cheaper so we often say that even nowadays everyone has a mobile phone and everyone has an internet connectivity but there are also certain section of people who live below the poverty line and also there is a certain section of people who are basically uh, just get the basic requirements of shelter and food for them internet and the mobile phones is definitely luxury so e-commerce is not catering to that kind of audience so that is a disadvantage now let us talk about the different security threats and issues which are faced in e-commerce so basically the cyber criminals use these kinds of uh, techniques to uh, pose a threat to the e-commerce businesses they are number one is spam so spams are basically uh, huge kinds of or bulky um, uh, unwanted messages which um, are sent to the users so what happens is that the spammers visit the social media inbox and send those kinds of messages and they wait for the users to click on them so uh, the spam messages might also contain some malicious links then comes phishing uh, phishing is normally uh, carried out through emails but it can also be carried out through sms text messages and uh, through the use of uh, voice calls so what happens is that in phishing a mail is sent to the user and the mail looks like the, uh, the like uh, it has come from a genuine site it is uh, trustworthy but it looks only trustworthy the mail might contain links and then attachments so if you click the link then you will be uh, transported to a site which will look very genuine and it will ask for your user id and password so if you enter the user id and password those things will be recorded and which might be used to carry out some malicious kinds of activity uh, then uh, if uh, like uh, the phishing emails contain any kinds of attachments and if you download them so those attachments might look trustworthy but in case of downloading them malwares will be downloaded to your machines then comes distributed denial of service attacks so ddos and dos that is denial of service and uh, distributed denial of service these two types of attacks are basically um, aimed at disrupting uh, the server or the network so that uh, the audience catering to those servers and the networks are not able to access them so what happens is that in case of denial of service um, servers or the network is flooded with traffic so that they are not able to handle the traffic properly and they crash also in some cases what happens is that um, a kind of information sending a trigger code is sent to the server which uh, triggers crash so the server crashes and in case of dis distributed denial of service it is very much similar to denial of service but it only differs in the aspect that uh, in distributed denial of service the traffic is sent from multiple ip addresses then comes sql injection attacks so sql injection attacks are basically sql scripts which a which are aimed at um, manipulating the contents of the database so the database contents consist of user information which are very critical and which should be confidential it shouldn't be accessed by any and everyone but in case of sql injection attacks the um, uh, attacker aims to inject some kind of sql script so that it he he or she can uh, gain the uh, user information and then either delete it corrupt it or use it for uh, their personal gains so finally sir we have some mcq questions over here uh, number one is which of the following are the advantages normally associated with e-commerce the options are shorter cycle times reduction in costs reaches wider audience and all of the above so definitely e-commerce is connect uh, is conducted through online um, through the internet media so it covers all the three benefits
then um, the next question is uh, dash is an unsolicited email sent to every email address that a business can find so the answer will be spam email so basically uh, every email address every recipient is sent a kind of spam email so that is why the answer is spam email then comes which one is not a threat for e-commerce definitely trojan hordes viruses swarms all three of them are uh, types of um, attack vectors so the answer will be none because all are the threats of e-commerce so none is not a threat of e-commerce then what floods a website with so many requests for service that it slows down or crashes so as i discussed previously it's a denial of service attack so the answer will be option c thank you sir very good presentation thank you all